<laughs> so just some backstory. This was my first deer rifle that I owned. My parents bought it for me in a pawn shop in Juneau, Alaska. And a friend of mine put a scope he had on there and they gave it to me for Christmas, I think was my memory. Yeah, I got it for Christmas. So when I got that gun, I must have been about 12 or 13. And I was not a huge 12 or 13 year old by any means. I was pretty small when I was really young. So um, I could like, I couldn't hold this thing up. So my first year's deer hunting, I'd carry this huge heavy rifle strapped on my back up the mountains. And if I ever had managed to actually get in front of a buck, the deer would be looking at me and I'd try to pick up the gun and I couldn't hold it up, it was too heavy. So I'd be like jumping around, trying to find somewhere to put this gun on. And then if I finally got that thing rested where I wanted to go, boom, it just about blow me off my feet. Well, good morning guys. We're out here today with my 303 British uh, Enfield rifles today. These are really cool guns. So the lower model is my first deer hunting rifle. I've had that for uh, at least 17 years now. It's just been an absolutely wonderful gun. So it is sporterized. So they cut the wood back, changed the stock, and then they added a uh, scope mount. And the scope mount is by S and K. And that's worked out really nicely. Well, the second gun is one that I recently acquired about three or four years ago. And I believe I'm not sure on this one if the wood used to go all the way out to the end like a lot of the guns I've seen and they partially sporterized it or if this is actually how this one came um, I imagine the wood actually used to go out to the end but this gun still has the iron sights um, which I really like so this one's a 1944 number one mark three see it 1944 number one dark three and my main hunting rifle here that's a Leopold scope by the way it's a great scope let's see so this one's stamped on the other side it's interesting 1943 England and this one doesn't have the number one on it. 1943. Oh, there it is. Number four, mark one. So we got a 1944, number one, mark three. And then we got a number four, mark one, 1943. This gun had a new barrel put on it before I got it. The barrel says Santa Fe on it. So somebody sporterized it and put a new barrel on it. That is my main hunting rifle. I just shot two beautiful bucks with it just recently. So. We're going to go ahead and uh, fire these guns. Um, I've been shooting really straight with the scope rifle, but I've been putting a lot of miles on it, so I want to come out and make sure that we're sighted in and uh, just drilling with it. So let's go ahead and try that. And then I thought, hey, why not bring the other one out? So uh, these are actually my main two rifles. So I, uh, I carry the scoped one for pretty much all of my hunting, pretty much all of it. And then I carry the rifle with the open sights in the summer when we're kind of hunting and also just mainly have it for bear protection. And that's really nice because I like having the open sights on the gun for bear protection here today. So we're out around the point here. 
Kennedy Springs, Alaska. Super beautiful day. Let's go ahead and put on our earplugs. So I'm at 50 yards, just at 50 yards. I uh, I just sight all my guns in at 50 yards. Um, mainly because just it's really rare that I shoot deer from much farther than that. I usually shoot them in the forest pretty close here. So that's just what I do. Just feel like I'm really, I'm really happily consistent at 50 yards, usually. <laughs> Let's see how we do here. Let's see, I think I could back the portal up just a little bit. Okay. Well, this is the uh, 303 British, 303 Enfield. Uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best rifles ever made. Um, my favorite rifle that I own. I have other rifles um, that are great, like a Model 70 300 Win Mag. It's a great rifle. But this one's really cool. It's uh, not super lightweight, but not too heavy. I've gotten used to it over the years. And my favorite thing is it's got a 10 round clip in there. So, um, you know, most deer rifles only hold like three rounds. So it's kind of nice having 10 rounds in there. In bear country, it's nice because then you shoot your deer and then it's still kicking around a little bit. You try to shoot it in the head and you miss it. And then the third time you get him, normally you'd be out of bullets. You got to reload of oh, this gun. You still got seven more shots. Just throw another one in the chamber, put the safety on. You got one in the chamber, six in the clip, and you're still, you know, pretty darn well protected for bears. So the only problems I've ever had to this gun is if the clip is not clicked in all the way. And then if you load the clip incorrectly so that the uh, bullet casings don't step their way down the casing, it'll jam. But look at that, just perfect. We got a Leopold scope on here. My first years with this gun, first 10 years, I had a different scope. And I had a lot of issues with it. I put this Leopold scope on here and this gun has just been absolutely perfect ever since. So I, uh, you know, I highly recommend just getting a good Leopold optic. This is like one of the lower grade Leopolds, I think. I'm sure it is, but it's uh, really good. So let's see how we do here. 303 British. I don't see it. Let's try again. Wow. Four inches high and two inches to the left. I think I see the other one there too. So, not very good. Funny, I wasn't planning on making an adjustment today, but let's go take a look. Now let's go take a look. Not very good. <laughs> oh, I had a really long week of hunting. It's Sunday today. My body's all tired out, so it seems like I'd be shooting just fine, but we'll see. Oh, okay. So. Not the end of the world, guys and gals, not the end of the world. Not my best shooting, but... Huh. All right, well... One, two, three. I'd like to see that one about right... If that one was about right there, it was a little triangle, I'd feel pretty good about it, so... But it's not. So, I'm not going to try to explain to you how to side in your rifle, but I am going to go ahead and make a big adjustment here. So, 
we're gonna go ahead and go four inches to the right, two and a half inches down. I'm really surprised I have to make an adjustment, but like I said, that's why I came out here to check it, I guess. So, 100 yards, it's a quarter inch to the click. So I'm not sure if this ever works out perfectly, but the way I think of it is at 50 yards, it's gonna move that bullet an eighth of an inch a click. So that's eight clicks to the inch. So let's go ahead and go down two inches. So we're gonna drop this. I know most people sight their guns in with this like one shot method and all this stuff. I just, I just kind of come out here and shoot it and adjust it till I get those, you know, three in the bullseye or three right around the bullseye and call it good. So we need to take our caps off here. Okay, so up, down. We're gonna go two inches down. I know it's two and a half, so we're gonna go 20 clicks down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That seems like all the way down. Huh, well, let's try that. And we need to go to the right. So we need to go to the right four inches, which theoretically is 32 clicks. Let's just see what happens. Okay, 32. So let's see what happens. I was surprised that I had to drop it all the way down, but maybe at 50 yards, I'm shooting just a little bit high. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and try this one again here. I'd like to see a little better than that. Look, I think what we'll do for fun is we'll try the open sight rifle from this same uh, distance. I think that'll be really cool. See how we do with that. So let's go ahead. I know there's all this stuff about sighting your guns in and keeping the barrels cold and all that, but we're only shooting at 50 yards, so I just started to freak out about it. And if it's ever not working out, like if I ever come out here and I just can't shoot a good pattern, it's like instead of just wasting tons of ammo, just go home, come back the next day, shoot two, three perfect shots, adjust it, and go home. So, 303 British, take two. Ooh, ooh, I think we put that one right through the heart of her. I should just stop there, right? Bullseye, call it good. <laughs> well, that one was blue to the right. So one more. So, obviously it wouldn't have been fun to stop there, but it didn't work out, so let's go check it out. Okay, well here we go. So, let's just say there's the center of my first one. So here's my next shot. Yeah, I should have stopped there. No, I'm kidding. So, I think it's probably centered more here so the height I'm pretty happy with I think we went a little far on the to the right so I'm gonna go ahead and go 10 clicks to the left 
and we'll see where that puts us, but we're coming in on it. Funny, that was a big blunt nose bullet. They got a shooting cut us in different rounds. And that big blunt nose one jammed a little bit as it was going in. But... I think we're closing it in. Well, sheesh, I'm going on a really special hunt tomorrow, so I'm <laughs> super glad I did this. Oh yeah, okay. Let's see what we did here. I think we're coming, coming into reasonable range here. Let's see what we got. Okay, I think we're starting to shoot the gun now. I was freaking out at first. All right. So this time I'm shooting this target right here. So I was shooting this target right here. And we got one, two, almost in the same hole, and a third right there. So these three are almost an inch high. And these three are the same, okay? So, now that I'm so close, I don't want to dust too much. So I think we're going to go 10 clicks, moved us from here to there. Let's go four. I'm just going to go four to the left and see what that does for us. Pretty happy with that. Felt pretty good about that that time. It's about all the ammo I brought for that one anyway. Wow. Well, let's see how we're doing. I'm uh, pretty pleased with that. I'm not gonna teach you how to sight in your gun because I'm not obviously, if you look at this, I'm not an expert at it, but let's take a look. I mean, here you go. So you gotta be able to shoot the deer in the head. Ah, uh, shooting great now. It's just, it's just shooting great. Look at this, so happy. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. I'm gonna go two clicks to the left, and I'm not even gonna shoot it again. Two clicks to the left right now. And we're gonna call that good. So, there's my first three. We do our huge adjustment, which overcompensates a little bit. Okay, right there. And then we shot these three. Started to remember how to shoot the gun. 
And we brought that in here. We're just gonna go two, two over, and we'll call that good for the day. Come out another day. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we got two fresh targets, so let's blow some holes with that open sight 303 and uh, go home. <laughs> You feel great in your hand. I always carry it like this. Great rifle. Well, that was really fun. I feel really, really good about that. Um, at the end of the day, I was shooting just about how I'd like to be at 50 yards, so I'm happy with that. Uh, surprised how far out it was. I'm really, really glad we came out today. So let's go ahead and uh, watch the action go one time. Nice and smooth action. I got a really good safety side right there i love the safeties on these guns i just keep my thumb on there like this when i'm hiking a lot you can see it's not too heavy so it's a 303 british 1944 number one mark three open sights at 50 yards let's see what happens there I love this rifle, it's really nice. It's always funny for me that the kick with this rifle feels half of the other one. That's just because it doesn't have a scope. So when you're kind of closing on the scope, I find that gun really gives you a big bang. Oh wow! Well, we shot a. That is freaking hilarious. Son of a gun. Well, we shot a pattern, and it's exactly the same distance off as the other rifle, but we actually shot kind of a pattern here. Huh. Okay. One, two, I thought that was a third one. No, I think maybe it was this. Okay. And we were shooting for here. So, <laughs> not funny. That was like my same, same thing. So, I, uh, I often shoot high with open sight rifles until I get used to it. So I just, I already got the elevation dropped all the way. So what I need to do is just get that front bead in the very, very, very bottom of the notch and then just hold the touch low. That's fine. Side to side, it's really funny. So the only way to change it is, is uh, right here on the front. You tap that side to side and I already tapped it I give it a big tap and I moved it over last time I sighted this gun in and I thought I had it perfect, but it's obviously not perfect. So it would have been a dead deer if I'd been going for the body shot, but I'm going to give that when I get back to my shop, I'm going to move that dovetail sight over just another 16th of an inch and we'll come out and try again. But let's just try a couple more and I'll hold it low. Just a hair. And that's, you know, that's just open sights. It's like I find I really, I always shoot high until I get myself held down. So when I'm, sometimes I shoot deer with my 450 Marlin open sights that I care for bears. I always got to remember to hold it low and I'll get them right in the heart of the lungs. So let's try a couple more. And then I'll adjust that sight a tiny bit when I'm home. I don't have like my hammer out here. I'll use a little punch and a hammer. Just a little more. First time I got the gun, it shot a foot to the left, <laughs> like over a foot. And I was like, oh God. And then I uh, adjusted it and I thought we were drilling. We're getting close.
tail, let's see what that did. So all I did there basically is I just held a tiny bit low and a tiny bit to the right. I mean, just a tiny bit, which is honestly, you know, I really go for a headshot in a deer unless I'm super close. So I'm always holding a little bit down to the right anyway. Take a look, this thing's drilling too. <laughs> I didn't even know if I'm gonna change it. I don't know. Look at this. I'm shooting just as good as I am with the open sights as the scope. Isn't that amazing? So here we go. Shooting this target, one, two, three. So we're centered about right there. Uh, which for me is like, gosh, you know, if the deer's head is sideways and I'd held right here on his head, it would have been, you know, I might give it a tiny change, but look at that. That's so here's our end with this rifle. Okay, there's our average. This one, it's about the same. 50 yards open sight, super, super good news. So I'm happy with that. I don't even think I'll change it. I think I'll just wait and I'll come out here again. I should change it just a tiny bit, shouldn't I? In case somebody else shoots the gun. And I won't remember that next time. Hold it a little down to the right. Hey, I will. Anyways, I'm super pleased with that. So yeah, both these guns, a little bit of practice, a little bit of adjustments and now they're just like absolutely drilling. Couldn't be happier. There are some other people coming out to shoot and burn trash and stuff out there. So I figured I'd come around the corner and give you a little view here. So there's my hometown of Tenneke Springs and the inlet that we're hunting. Uh, we've been doing great. I got two beautiful bucks so far this year. We're gonna go up the inlet get another one or two tomorrow I'm really excited about it I might actually video some of that hunt um, not the killing part but the wilderness part of it so yeah these are my 303 British um, that's my first rifle so everybody's coming <laughs> so just some backstory this was my first deer rifle that I owned. My parents bought it for me in a pawn shop in Juneau, Alaska. And a friend of mine put a scope he had on there and they gave it to me for Christmas, I think was my memory. Yeah, I got it for Christmas. So when I got that gun, I must have been about 12 or 13. And I was not a huge 12 or 13 year old by any means. I was pretty small when I was really young. So um, I could like, I couldn't hold this thing up. So my first year's deer hunting, I would carry this huge, heavy rifle strapped on my back up the mountains. And if I ever managed to actually get in front of a buck, the deer would be looking at me and I'd try to pick up the gun and I couldn't hold it up. It was too heavy. So I'd be like jumping around, trying to find somewhere to put this gun on. And then if I finally got that thing rested where I wanted to go, boom, it just about blow me off my feet. So uh, my first experiences with this gun, the first five years were just so funny. It was so big. It was like carrying a cannon around. I had to get my cannon laid out perfectly in the woods, pointed at the deer. <laughs> uh, now, as uh, a full-size man, it's, uh, I love shooting it standing up. I just love shooting it. It's great. Um, I'm just getting used to that open sight version, but after today, I'm like, wow, uh, a lot more confidence than that. I shot just as good, pretty much identically to my uh, scoped rifle. Except for I didn't have to mess with the scope so much. So I thought that was really impressive. So I don't see any reason I'm ever going to get another rifle. It's really funny. I have a 300 Winchester Mag Model 70. Beautiful, beautiful rifle. And uh, I'm not going to use that until I'm old. And even then, I don't know. Um, I just love it. It's just perfect. It's got a brand new barrel on it when I got it. Somebody, some gunsman put a new barrel on there. And I don't think I'm going to wear that barrel out. I... Uh, other than sighting it in, I just shoot a couple deer one-shot kills every year, so uh, I just love it. Um, I think if you get the chance to pick one of these 303 British up uh, for one of your kids or for yourself, uh, you're going to be happy with it for a lifetime. Um, I'm sure that someday Aira will be carrying that gun around. Uh, my daughter Aira will be carrying that gun around, so uh, I'll link a few other videos below if you want to look at some other of our little gun review videos. And yeah, here's the 303 British. The Leopold Scope, it's just a great gun. We got it in the soft mounts on the four-wheeler so we don't bump it anymore. 
And then, whew, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rifle. I'm so happy I got another one of these. I've always wanted another one. A friend gave this to me, a friend of my dad and my mom. His dad got the rifle, but he told me they never hunted with it. They like got it, they're done in Washington, they got it and they were gonna go deer hunting and just never did. So it just sat around for years and years and years. So he gave me his dad's gun, pretty grateful for that. So, uh, ooh, there's another shot. One of my friends shot her first, uh, First buck with this rifle. It's pretty cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming with me today. Uh, if you'd like to see a video of us out in the woods hunting with these rifles, I'm taking my boat up this gorgeous inlet that way. Um, please click on the like and subscribe buttons below because we're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much.